in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. And it was classified as sound by Al Albani. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Innaka lan tada'a shay'an lillahi azza wa jal illa abdalaka allahu bihi ma huwa khayrun laka minh You will never give something up for the sake of Allah the Almighty except that Allah will compensate you with something better for you than it. The scholars when explaining this hadith, they broke it into three segments or three phrases that it included. <clears throat> they said the first phrase is لَن تَدَعَ شَيْئًا You will never give something or a thing. شَيْئًا in Arabic is called نَكِرَة indefinite. And that means that it encompasses all things and all matters. The second phrase, لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ For the sake of Allah the Almighty. So they said, given something for other than Allah would not count. Given something up out of fear, you fear to do something, you fear to sin, you fear to consume alcohol, for example, because you'll be punished by the police if you're caught, for example. That's not giving alcohol up for the sake of Allah. It's for the sake of avoiding imprisonment. You can't give it up as a show off to show people that you're pious so you refrain from it. That doesn't count. You cannot claim to have given something up if you're initially incapable of doing it. So someone wants to consume drugs, but he simply doesn't have the money to buy it. He's poor. So he says, okay, I'm not going to buy it. Well, you can't buy it. You want to, but you can't. So that doesn't count. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, giving up things that a person is accustomed to or loves, desires. When it is done for other than the sake of Allah, it's very difficult. It's not easy to give it up. However, he said, however, when one gives it up for the sake of Allah, it becomes easy. It becomes facilitated for you to give it up. Yet, he said, yet one may be tested in the beginning to prove whether or not he's sincere, he's truthful. But, he goes on to say, but if he perseveres for this short period of the test, then he will enjoy the consequence and will find sweetness to it. As one of the Salaf said, I struggled in Qiyamul Layl, giving up rest and sleep. That's a struggle to give it up. He said, I struggled for a year, working hard and striving against myself and my desire, giving up rest and sleep for the sake of Allah to wake up and pray Qiyamul Layl. He said, I've done this for a year and then it was facilitated. Then I enjoyed it for 20 years after that. Subhanallah. And then the third phrase is the consequence of giving that thing up for the sake of Allah 
What is the consequence? Allah will compensate you with something better than it. Better for you than it. And this is simply stating the reward of persevering through this, through giving something up for the sake of Allah. Now the compensation is not all the same. Qadad al-Sudsi Rahmatullahi alayhi said, Never will a slave intend to commit an evil and then gives it up for no other reason but out of fear of Allah Azza wa Jal except that Allah will hasten his compensation for him in this life before the hereafter. So we have two types of compensations from Allah Azza wa Jal. One is worldly and one in the hereafter. Now the worldly one is of two types. Materialistic, tangible is the first type. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ gave up everything for the sake of Allah. They got, gave up their wealth. They gave up their land. They gave up their families. They gave everything up for the sake of Allah. They struggled in the beginning of the da'wah of the Prophet ﷺ. But what was the consequence? The tangible consequence is that they became rulers of the world. Allah Azza wa Jal facilitated for them the treasures of other kings and kingdoms. Like the treasures of the Persian and so on. But again, it doesn't have to be something tangible. It can be something intangible. Ibn al-Qayyim, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, Compensation takes different forms, but the greatest form is when Allah Azza wa Jal instills in the heart of that slave pleasure with Allah, tranquility in the heart, and acceptance and contentment with the decree of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the ultimate compensation. When the state of the heart with Allah is at the top. One person who, was, who gave, it, gave up this life for the sake of Allah was very ascetic from the Salaf. Was approached by some people. And they said, your appearance is so shabby, you look miserable. You gave everything up for the sake of Allah. So... What was it that Allah Azza wa Jal compensated you with? What's in return? He said, He gave me the best thing. He made me content with His decree, with my situation, with my state. This is the best anyone can obtain. This is in this life, in the hereafter. Sindi Rahmatullahi Alayhi said, An atom's or a dust particle's weight of the pleasures of the hereafter is better for the slave than this worldly life and all that it contains. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ خَافَ مَقَامَ رَبِّهِ وَنَهَنْ نَفْسَ عَنِ الْهَوَى فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى And as for he who fears the position in front of his Lord and prevents the soul from evil inclinations and desires, what is the consequence? He gave this up for Allah. فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ هِيَ الْمَأْوَى Jannah, paradise, will be the abode. 
in the books of Al Imam Al Bukhari and Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam narrates a Qudusi hadith on behalf of Allah azza wa jal, where Allah azza wa jal addresses the angels, the record keepers, saying to them, "When my slave." intends to commit an evil to commit a sin do not record it against him until he actually commits it and if he does then record it as one evil deed but if he refrains if he gives it up for the sake of Allah one might attempt intend to do something bad Right? But remembers Allah, remembers death, remembers the hereafter, remembers the position standing before Allah, being questioned by Allah. And he decides, no, I'm not going to do it. Then what's the consequence? What's the compensation Allah tells him? If he doesn't, then record it as a good deed. Allah Azza wa Jal facilitates matters for us if and only we are sincere with Him. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to be as He wants us to be. Allahumma ameen. Akhulu ma tasma'una wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Wa ba'd. Many examples can be given <clears throat> for what a slave can give up for the sake of Allah. But let me take a couple of examples from the heritage we have. Suhaib al-Rumi, radiyallahu anhu. And he was called a rumi but he was an Arab, but he was captured as a slave by the Romans. And that's why he was given that nickname, radiyallahu anhu. And he was one of the first to embrace Islam in Mecca. When he uh, was about to migrate to Medina, the Quraysh discovered his plan and uh, went after him until they caught up with him. And he was a slave sold by the Romans to someone in Mecca but then they freed him before Islam and he became well off. <clears throat> so when they caught up with him, they said, you came to us as a slave and you're leaving us as a wealthy man. We will never leave you. You've given up your faith and followed this man. So he took out 40 arrows from his pouch. And he said, O oh Quraysh, by Allah you know that I'm a very accurate man when I shoot. I will end these 40 with 40 of you. And then I will resort to my sword. And you know that I'm a very aggressive and vicious fighter. You will not reach me until this breaks. But if you wish, I'll give you another choice. I have such and such wealth in Mecca, back in Mecca. I've kept it in such and such place. Go take it and leave me alone. So they agreed and they let him go. When he reached Al Medina, Allah revealed. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْرِي نَفْسَهُ بْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ And amongst the people is he who sells himself for the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Prophet ﷺ called him and he said, يَا أَبَا يَحْيَى O Abu Yahya, indeed, your trade is profitable 
And he recited this verse for him. It's enough that Allah Azza wa Jal was pleased with him. What's this life? What's the wealth that he had compared to being amongst those whom Allah Azza wa Jal is pleased with? Prophet Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam went through a very, very tough test. He was a young, extremely attractive young man. He was a very extremely attra attractive young man and was seduced by who? By the wife of Al-Aziz. Al-Aziz is something like a prime minister in our time, if you may. He was in her castle. He was a slave. She owned him behind closed doors. No one knows him. He's nothing but a slave. So he had nothing to fear. Worldly wise. When she tried to seduce him, out of fear of Allah Azza wa Jal, he refrained. He ran away. He actually ran away from her until she ran after him and grabbed him by his shirt and tore his shirt. You see the test? She was adamant. But Allah Azza wa protected him because he was sincere in giving it up for Allah. And despite his innocence, and they discovered that he had nothing to do with him, Yet they decided to put him in jail. He was still content. He said, Oh Allah, Oh my Lord, indeed imprisonment is dearer to me than that to which they invite me. He gave it up. And he was tested. Remember we said, you might go through a test. Then he was tested. But what was the consequence? What did Allah Azza wa Jal compensate him with? He became the Aziz. He became the Aziz. And thus we established for Yusuf in the land. When his brothers came, at the end of the story, at the end of the chapter, قَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الْعَزِيز Oh, Al-Aziz! Oh, Prime Minister! They didn't know that he was Yusuf, their brother. So he gave it up for Allah. He suffered. He was tested. He went through hardships for years. But then compensation came and became a lofty person in the community. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, مَا زَادَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا رِفْعَةٍ Allah will not increase a slave for pardoning others except in honor, he becomes honorable amongst the people. And this is in this life. Giving up, taking revenge, and getting even, pardoning others. Now in the hereafter, in the book of Imam Muslim, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, مَنْ كَذَمَ غَيْظًا وَهُوَ قَادِرٌ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يُنْفِذَهُ He who suppresses his anger, though he is able to act upon it, he is able to inflict harm. دَعَاهُ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ رُؤُوسِ الْخَلَائِقِ Allah will call him in front of all creation on the Day of Judgment. فَخَيَّرَهُ مِنَ الْحُورِ الْعِينِ and he will give him the choice from the, amongst the Hur, the ladies of Jannah, to marry any of them he wishes. 
Now this is in the hereafter. This is in return for what? For giving up, acting upon your anger and, forbid, and, and pardoning people and forgiving them. Man tawada'a lillahi raf'ah. He who humbles himself for the sake of Allah, Allah will raise his rank. I happened to meet a, an official in one of the countries. Now, I didn't know that he was an official. I met him in the masjid. And the guy was so humble, so down to earth, so kind, so polite, so helpful. It was just, subhanallah, you would wish you have these qualities in you. Subhanallah, he looked like a, a, an ordinary normal person, right? And then late, days later, one of the people in the mosque, I was talking to him, and we mentioned this person that he was a very nice man. He said, do you know who this man is? I said, no. He said, his rank in this country is this. I said, subhanallah, this man? He said, yes. I said, man tawada'a lillahi raf'ah. He humbled himself, though he had all that it takes to act like an important person. Because he indeed was an important person. But he acted so humble, so down to earth. And the first thing that came to heart was, what a noble man. So Allah raised his rank in the hearts of people. In addition to what awaits him in the hereafter. As a compensation from Allah Azza wa Jal in return. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us to govern our hearts and control it or control them to give things up for his sake and only for his sake Allahumma ameen Allahumma aslihna wa aslih qulubana wa tahhir qulubana Allahumma ahdina wa ahdibina wa ja'alna hudatan muhtadina wa ja'alna sababan liman ihtada